and welcome to episode 12 of West End Talks. We're here to, this morning slash tonight, we'll get into that in a minute, uh, but we're here today talking to the, a Rocky Horror legend, I think is the only word for it. Uh, he has most notably played Riff Raff in over 1,800 performances worldwide of Rocky Horror. So let's welcome Christian Lavercombe. Welcome. Hello. Greetings from New Zealand. Yes, yeah, so you're actually in New Zealand at the moment. That's where you, you live, isn't it? You, you stay in New Zealand. Well, um, I certainly, uh, it's my home country, kind of. Uh, mm. But I just happened to be visiting at the beginning of lockdown. And so I'm happily stuck here. <laughs> <laughs> I love, yes, I can imagine. I think some of us would love to have been stuck in New Zealand or somewhere nice like that, yes, uh, over yes. England. But so obviously it's, it's nine o'clock in the morning here. But it's eight o'clock at night over there, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, in the, I'm, I'm greeting you from the future. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so strange thinking that. Uh, it's almost Saturday for you. But thank you for joining us. It's, it's an absolute privilege to talk to, to a legend. That's the only thing for it. Certainly in the, the Rocky Horror family, you're a legend. Um, you. so, uh, we'll start the episode the way we normally do. Uh, and that's just what got you into performing? Um, it's, it was by accident really, because, um, I guess I'm an extroverted introvert, I would probably say. And, um, I, I've always been the shy person in the corner <laughs> and, um, in high, in, in school in here, they call it intermediate school, which is the school between primary school and, and college and I went to a meeting at school uh, I don't know what it was for I thought it was for some club and it turned out it was for the special choir and um, as soon as I realized I tried to back out of the room and um, they wouldn't let me leave uh, until I'd sung so they forced me to sing <laughs> and uh, yeah and if I I think if I hadn't gone into that meeting, then I possibly would have had a completely different path. I probably wouldn't even realize I could sing because no one in my family is musical, nobody sings, nobody does anything like that. So, um, so I think that's probably what got me started. And then I just got really involved. And even in that choir, I always had a voice that could kind of cut through steel. And when um, I'd come back from after singing something in the choir, my teachers would go, that was a wonderful solo you sang, Christian. I thought you were fabulous. And I was like, I wasn't singing a solo. <laughs> I just was very loud. Not always pleasant, but very loud. <laughs> I like to be heard. <laughs> yes. That's it, you like to be heard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same, I just can't sing, that's my problem. But I just like to be heard. <laughs> so what was the first, production you did what was uh, well, going, you from, going that uh, are you talking about you know not professional the first production i ever did whatever yes but, but about uh, then what was your first amateur production uh, my first production was in school actually and it was uh my school used to do very good um musical theater productions they were kind of known for doing those and it was oliver and i played dodger and um, weirdly, I've, played, I've done Oliver twice in my life. I did a professional version when I was in my 20s, but I still played Dodger. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, but uh, I was covered, you know, when you're covered in all the dirt, you know, I'm not the, the biggest guy on earth. So when I was covered in all the dirt and, uh, you know, I blended in with all the kids. It and nobody, <laughs> nobody really noticed. And I do remember when I came, uh, after the show one day, somebody asked me, you know, and I was definitely an adult. They were like, so what are you going to do when you leave school? <laughs> are you going to get into acting? And I went, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> you just played along. <laughs> just, just played play along. along. Yeah. That's it. So what was your first professional production then? What was the first thing you did professionally? Uh, my first professional production was a play uh, because um, I, I did train at a musical theatre school here in New Zealand. But um, when I came out, uh, I didn't get into musical theatre. I got into uh, a theatre company that mainly did plays. Right. So my first professional production was um, 
Oh, oh, I think I'm lying. I'm, I'm absolutely lying. I forgot one. I forgot when there was one, and it is a musical. I am a musical theatre performer. <laughs> um, no, I did a production of The Fantastics, and oh, uh, Fantastics is one of, I think it's one of the longest productions on, on Broadway or off-Broadway. Mm. It's certainly, yeah, uh, I think it's, I'm not sure which one, but it's certainly one of the longest in New York anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very it was very very popular in the sixties, and um, the music in it is fabulous. It has dated a lot, but um, I I played that I played did that role. I had the lead in that, and it was um, a really special experience. But um, mm. yeah, technically that was the first. Yeah, and I went. I hadn't seen the production, and I went and saw the production in New York a few years back, and. Um, they've kept it almost like a museum piece, so it's exactly the same as it was in the 60s. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to see a new version of it updated. That would be amazing. Updated, yeah. Because it's a bit like, uh, I know it's a, it's a play, but it's a bit like the mousetrap in London. Uh, yeah. it's, they've kept it exactly the same um, yeah. as it was originally. And as much as the mousetrap's great, an updated version of that, even in, in Fantastic. I've never seen the Fantastic. I've heard the soundtrack, but I've never the, seen the it. Sound, the soundtrack is brilliant. The soundtrack is yeah. great. There's some great songs in it. And um, yeah, some great, yeah, great music. Good. So now we'll move on. Uh, and now, just a disclaimer, West End Talks take no responsibility for the questions getting asked next. Because these are all from <laughs> your fans. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be one. There's a lot about this show uh, yep. coming up. Yep. Uh, but there's a few other ones, uh, a few surprise questions. You, we've got a question from... Um, Australia as well. Oh. oh, somebody from Australia has sent in a question uh, about one of the productions you did down there. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that one. Uh, but firstly, Ethan wants to know, what made you love the part of Riff Raff? Well, when I auditioned for the, the production where I played Riff Raff, because I did do a couple of productions before, smaller productions, where I played other roles, uh, I played Frankenfurter a couple of times and I played Brad Majors for a while. And um, so when I auditioned, and I only heard about it on the day, and I, um, one of those weird things, you know, when I saw it on Facebook and I was like, a friend of mine was going, I'm on my way to the Rocky Horror audition. I'm like, what do you mean? How come <laughs> I haven't heard about that? So, um, yeah, so I went along unprepared and, but you know, I had done the show before, so I was going to go in and go, I can sing anything from the show you would like me to sight sing, anything from the show that you would like me to do. But I, and I had planned on saying anything apart from Riff Raff because Riff Raff is so high and, the, and it's such a high belty rock scream that I didn't think I could do that because I just hadn't done it before. And, um, but I, as I went in, I thought, don't be negative, Christian. Don't be negative. Don't say that. So um, I didn't. And of course, the first thing they went said was, oh, we'll get you to sing Riff Raff. And um, uh, which terrified me. But um, Chris Luscombe, who was the director and is still the director of Rocky Horror. Um, yeah, I have to thank him for seeing in me uh, something that I didn't see in myself because I didn't completely didn't see me playing Riff Raff. So, um, so yeah, so I was, when I got it, I was very excited and um, I really got stuck into it. And then when I started doing it and started rehearsing it, um, it just really all fell into place naturally for me, the Riff Raff. I kind of felt like I really understood uh, the character and I understood um, I kind of understood what he was based on. Uh, yeah. I was a big fan of all those kind of old um, horror films and and sci-fi films. Uh, I used to watch them all on TV and stuff like that. So I'm, so I was very familiar with it, and it just kind of all f- fit into place. And uh, so yeah, so that, yeah, that, that's how it came about. And um, yeah, I did do a, I did do all the research into it, but I, I did have a bit of a, um, I, I guess I I had a bit of a cheat sheet because I'd done it before. Yeah, but no, but you hadn't done sure. Riff Raff. But now you, you I, I couldn't see you in any other pattern in, in Rocky Horror now. 
Well, it's, yeah. it's amazing, isn't it? Because I could never imagine myself playing uh, Riff Raff. I thought I would have been, when I went to that audition, I thought I would have made a really good swing because, um, you know, because I'd done a couple of other roles in, in the show, then I thought, oh, I'd be a good person to be a cover for all these different things. Because I, like I said, I'd just been doing plays for the majority. Of, I had done a few musicals here and there, but I'd mainly be doing plays. That's where I got the majority of my work. And uh, I even got to a stage where, you know, my agent um, didn't even know I was a singer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hadn't told them that, because I didn't think it was applicable to uh, to me getting work because in New Zealand, uh, the scene here in New Zealand, um, musicals are uh, not the majority of what where the work is. So, uh, so, so yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, so, so Barry asks. Um, obviously, Rocky Horror is is infamous for audience participation. Oh yes. Uh, more so in the UK, I think, for the sounds of it. I don't think there's a lot of countries that don't, but the UK I definitely I, the first time I went to see it, I, I was I was shocked at how the the I was like, What are you doing? It's not pantomime. It's a musical just sitting and then obviously realized it's actually part of the show. Um so Barry asks, Do you ever get put off with things that people shout from the audience? Like has anything ever put you off? Um nothing's put me off. Um, it is a strange situation with Rocky Horror because I'm expecting the audience to shout out and, um, you know, you have techniques for that. You know, you, it's almost, it's the same as when, as an actor, um, if you say a line and you get a laugh, you wait, you don't rehearse those laughs, you know, you wait for the laugh to finish and then you carry on. And it's the same with a call out. You let the call out happen. Often there's a laugh from the call out and then you carry on. So, um, but, you know, inside your head, sometimes you are finding some of those things incredibly funny because uh, sometimes the audiences, especially with Rocky Horror in the UK, they are so well rehearsed because they come so often and uh, they've really thought about the show. They know their, they know their lines and they might, have come up, they might have come up with something very topical or very new that I might have never heard before. And, you know, sometimes it takes you off guard because you'll go, oh, they're going to say this bit here. And then they say something completely different and it'll be very funny. And, um, you know, they're, they're, I'm sure there have been a few corpses here and there where you uh, can't help but laugh along. And, but the thing is, the difference with that, uh, then sort of, you know, just laughing and the audience not knowing what's going on, you go, why are those actors laughing? Everybody's in on the joke. So, yeah. um if you do happen to laugh, then they know exactly what you're laughing at. And, you know, they, they love, they love that as well because they love seeing a bit of, you know, things going wrong as well. Yeah, I do. And that's why I love, love live theater. Like, it's not the only reason I come in and view live theater was because I, I love it a little bit. When things do go, not necessarily wrong, but people can't get back onto the lines because of something that's happened. It, it's, that adds to it, I think. To a bit. Yeah. I think if it and happened all the you, time, that's different, but every so often, like maybe if that's gonna happen, away. it's gonna happen in Rocky Horror because uh, Rocky Horror has the wildest audiences of any show I have ever encountered, any show I've ever seen or ever been in. And uh, there is a feeling, and I, I'm sure this is part of why the audiences love it so much, is there is a feeling that anything could happen at any time in that audience. And often it does. <laughs> like, you know, there's been some crazy things where people, you know, suddenly at the birth of Rocky, somebody will jump up and be born and then run around the theater. And I've seen lots of ushers chasing people around the theater in a scene or, you know, there's been some crazy things happen. And um, yeah, you know, there's been after 1800 shows though, you know, some of it does blend into one. I wish I could remember it all. I don't know, you couldn't have possible last 1800 shows. Um, but Samuel asks, he's asking about another part of the, the audience participation, and yes. that's dressing up. A lot of the audience like to dress up when they come to Rocky Horror. So what is the best and worst costume you've ever seen an audience member wear? Well, um, <laughs> well, off, well, with Rocky Horror, you know, some people go... Um, to great lengths with their costumes in the audience. Like, 
you know, they, um, you know, because I've been so connected with the show for such a long time, then, you know, I'm, you know, I'm fairly approachable when it comes to Rocky Horror because of social media and stuff like that. So I will have people contacting me going, can you take a picture of the inside of this lining? Can you tell me exactly who made that item? You know, they will be, because they will be getting exact replicas of the costumes. And, um, you know, if they come along to the show and they see there's been a change in costume or something, something might've changed in the costume, they'll be contacting me immediately going, can you, something's changed. Can you please tell me what that change is? And, you know, and some people pay a fortune on those costumes, but you know, I love the good costumes and I love the bad costumes. And sometimes there's nothing more amazing than looking out there. And sometimes, you know, I've seen, you know, two or three entire rows of riffraffs, like, you know, they've all come together dressed as riffraff. And then you go, and then you see, you know, literally like a hundred riffraffs out there and it's, there's something quite amazing about that. Something very surreal. Uh, but, you know, occasionally people take it too far. Uh, and I, I know that's, I'm not sure if that is actually possible with Rocky Horror, but, you know, occasionally somebody will, will forget that they're actually in public and they'll be wearing something so, <laughs> so uh, out there and revealing that there has been a couple of occasions when ushers have had to come <laughs> down and go, excuse me, can you, can you put this over you? Because there are adolescents around. <laughs> right, yeah, no, I, I think I would love to do it. Like, I, I came to see it in Glasgow, as I said to you before. Uh, I've seen it loads, but the one time, obviously the last time I saw it was in Glasgow. Uh, and I went with my mother and my gran, uh, and they wouldn't let me dress up. No! I was so amused. Uh, now, they know, like, they know about the show, and my mum's seen it quite a few times. Um, I think she saw one of the original tours of it as well. Um, but she, she just didn't like that. I'm like, Mum, it's part of the show. And I was, I was willing to go as Riff Raff. I wasn't needing to go as, a, as, as Frank and Butter. Like, I, I was willing even just to go in the, the lab coat and the, the rubber gloves. Like, yeah. just to dress up. I went to, but no, no, they wouldn't let me. I'm like, ha ha. <laughs> Uh, that was well, also the Glasgow, performance. Often in Glasgow as well, if you go if you go and you're not dressed up, then you know sometimes. Well, if if it's a Friday or Saturday night, you'll probably be in the minority. Because, yeah, that's. You know, I tried to tell mum that, but she wouldn't. Really yeah. Yeah, I'm like, mum, we, we all look the weird just because we were the ones not dressed up, but no, <laughs> she wasn't for that. But that was the one also. She decided that she was nearly uh, going to go in the audience, uh, the stage, sorry, because we were at the we were sitting up in the gods, and she decided right. to take a, a head first tumble down the stairs. Um, and ended up at A&E. So we didn't actually see the show that night. We had to come back another night. But hey-ho. Oh, and she well, was that desperate like to be here. part of the show. And um, she decided, oh, we'll just fall down the sails. But moving on, uh, Joel, he wants to know, what's the funniest thing to have happened during a show? Ooh. Not necessarily Rocky Horror. It can be any, any show you've done. Oh, any show I've done. Well, it hasn't specified. Uh, that's very interesting. I, you know, what's, sometimes things happen that aren't necessarily funny, but they're unusual. Like um, I was doing a production of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead. And uh, there's a scene in that where you're doing a play within a play. And I was dressed up. Oh, well, there is a, it is connected to Rocky Horror because I was dressed up as a woman in full Shakespearean uh, dress. And... Um, there's a scene in that where we're doing a play and then Hamlet runs on to the stage and we were on this kind of platform stage that had wheels on it that was sort of battened down. And um, yeah, during that, somebody jumped up on the platform and at the same time, all the locks on, on the platform snapped. And the entire thing, the entire thing like a skateboard, not restrained with six people on it, seven people on it, went flying, flying downstage towards the audience at a really fast pace. And at the back of it, it had a little lip on the back. So when it went down, we just went shoo, straight up into the air. And I remember I was standing with a bouquet of flowers in my hands and I, I do, suddenly I was just on my back looking at the ceiling. I couldn't quite figure out what was going on. Uh, and Hamlet, who had been pointing was also pointing at the ceiling. It happened so fast. We were frozen in the exact positions we were standing in. 
but on our backs. And uh, it did turn out to be quite bad. I think somebody might have broken a collarbone and there was a um, arm broken. I think I had a big gash down my back, but none of the actors acknowledged that it happened. We just got up, carried on with the scene and then went off and then, oh, actually after that, we had to all climb into this sort of uh, hole in the stage and wait down there for a scene. And then when we went down and then everybody went into shock, I think. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you know, sometimes I, that is the epitome of the show must go on. And uh, yeah, but it was a surreal experience because the audience also weren't sure if it was meant to happen or not. So the audience didn't even react. It's this insane thing with people breaking limbs and stuff like that happened in front of them and they thought we were all acting. So um, Yeah, actually like, no, my limb is actually broken here. Like it's, yeah. it's not acting. No, it was very, very bizarre. But you know, there are always the standard falls and crazy things happen and uh was this this question was the craziest thing that's happened to me. What's on the stage, was the cra- funniest or craziest, yeah? Funniest or craziest? I've just thought of a crazier one. <laughs> Right. Okay. Uh, I don't know what can be crazy. I was was playing Jesus and Jesus Christ Superstar in um, uh, in New Zealand, actually, and uh, somebody had given me a gift at stage door, and I had uh, because Jesus has to get down to a little loincloth. I had been not eating sugar. I'd been going to the gym as you do, Mm -hmm. and. Finally, somebody on opening night gave me a big box of cookies and I was, oh my gosh, I, I didn't want to eat them all because, you know, it was my opening night. So I, I shared them all around and nobody accepted. So I just had them myself. And then when I was getting ready, I was going, oh my God, I'm so nervous. I am so nervous that I can't feel my hands. I'm so nervous. Uh, I can't feel my legs. And I was walking back to the dressing room and was like, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm stoned and I was somebody had drugged somebody had drugged the 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 cookies at stage door and I and it was my opening night I was playing Jesus I was Jesus and um it was half an hour before the show started and um wow yeah, the show got held up for, it's a long, long story, but I'll, I'll make it really short. The show got held up for about 45 minutes and I um, eventually decided to go on and do it anyway because there was no understudy because it was opening night. And um, yeah, it was absolutely crazy. I do remember thinking, standing on stage and... Um, we were playing Jesus as a, as a rock star anyway. So um, I was standing there looking at this scene and, and going, wow, this is a really cool nightclub. <laughs> and then going, why are those people looking at me? And uh, I was like, they're looking at me. It's like, oh, because you're doing a show, Christian. You're doing a show. <laughs> but, you know, it went well. It went well. Uh, it became a legendary thing. I think even Vice magazine might have done an article on it. And <laughs> it, um, yeah, I, I survived. I got through it. But it was one of the scariest things I have ever had to do um, in my entire life, probably. <laughs> Playing Jesus is, is hard enough in Jesus Christ Superstar, but to play him stoned, I know. like when it's not yeah. actually part of the character, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can imagine that. That's definitely doing crazy. anything like that on an opening night when you're, you know, not in your right mind, as I wasn't, um, is a scary, scary thing. But you know, at some stage, I uh, I'll probably do my own little video on it where I tell everybody in depth about that night. <laughs> but um, well, I think you yeah, should, Dan, I, I don't think you can get more. I don't think you can get much more crazier than that. No, I think you've 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 talked the crazy. I don't even think there's, there's nothing even in Rocky Horror that could probably top that. Um, <laughs> so, so Alan, Alan touches on this gentleman up here. Uh, you've worked with him quite a few times. Um, yes. For anyone who doesn't know, Richard O'Brien, the creator of of Rocky Horror, um, he has has played your Frankenfurter, and he also played Riff Raff in the movie. So, what's it like to to be working for a start with? The, the creator, but also with the person that, that played Riff Raff famously in the movie. 
I think any time, you know, it's so unusual to do a show where you get the opportunity to work with the person who wrote it or get the opportunity to work with the person who originally played your role. And, um, you know, I was, when I, when I first got the, it was the very first production of me playing Riff Raff where he came in and, and played the narrator. And um, so I'd only been playing Riff Raff for about, I think I'd been playing about three months before he joined the cast. So it was a short amount of time. And um, I remember the first rehearsal we had with him and um, I'm pretty sure uh, he w it, we had lunch break and he was coming in after lunch and I, I'm pretty sure I was very, very nervous. Imagine, yes. As you would be, why? Of course you'd be nervous. So, um, but you know, to be honest, he was just concentrating on his own stuff. You know, I don't think he'd done the, I don't think he'd played the narrator before, maybe he had, but he was just concentrating on learning that role. And, um, you know, he was lovely. It was amazing. And, and, you know, if you meet Richard O'Brien, you go, well, only he is capable of writing Rocky Horror. Um, you know, because everything, he's such a creative person and, um, and such an individual that, um, you know, I, I feel like Rocky Horror epitomizes him. And it's, yeah, it, he just defies the rules. And I believe... Rocky Horror defies the rules. That's why it's it's well, going strong. It's going strong 48 years after, you know, when other contemporaries of Rocky Horror have fallen to the wayside. And Rocky Horror continues to be popular, continues to have people who just adore the show. And uh, yeah, and I, I think, well, Richard O'Brien is totally responsible for that. 100%. Um, I had the privilege of meeting him at an event last year and he, uh, not a Rocky Horror one, just a, a separate event, and he was one of the guests, and he was an absolute scream. Like, you can see exactly, as you say, you can see why he wrote it. Uh, yeah. For anyone that doesn't know who Richard O'Brien is, in case anybody's watching, he was the original host of the Crystal Maze as well. That's how that's how I remembered them before, obviously, I saw Rocky Horror. Um, so he's, he's done a lot, but obviously he's the, the, the legend of Rocky Horror. Um, so it must have been nerve-wracking to sing Time Warp for the first time in front of it him. It is. Um, he... Um... Because in that version, and actually in every version I've done with him, in the final curtain call, we do a, re uh, a reprise of the Time Warp. And uh, so I would sing it with him, sharing lines with him. So, you know, that's a once in a lifetime experience for me yeah. that just kept on happening. So, um, you know, it was brilliant. But in those, he hasn't done it in recent productions, but in those first productions, he used to come on with, uh, he'd be wearing this, um, Jean-Paul Gaudier denim tailcoat and uh, he'd, he'd get out this guitar and he'd be playing the guitar while we did the time warp. He's the electric guitar and I was like, oh my God, you are a true rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've met anyone who was more of a rock star than Richard O'Brien. So uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was very, very, very cool. One of those moments that will live with me, I think. Yeah, no, definitely it was. It will be. Uh, so, so Liam wants to know, is there any plans to release Rocky Horror on DVD or Blu-ray soon? A performance that you've done. Obviously, the, the, the film's been released loads of times, but a performance. Yeah. Any uh, I don't actually think it's possible. I don't think, I think the producers would have done that um, already if it was possible. Um, but I think the problem is the, the film rights and the rights to release Rocky Horror in, uh, in the film world um, is owned by a different company to the people who own the rights to the stage show. And that's where it gets very, very confusing. So, um, yeah, so it's not possible at all to release it on a DVD. But I do think it's been a very long time, I think since the 25th anniversary, where the UK released a cast album of it. And I think that is long overdue. And, and there's, they can do that. So um, I think uh, something to concentrate on next time Rocky Horror comes up, I don't know if I'll be in or not, but next time is um, to try and get a cast album going. I think that would be really cool. I've somehow never been on the cast album, so <laughs> after doing it all this time. So, um, yeah. Get you in the next cast album. Okay. Even if you're not in the production, we'll get you back to do the cast album. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
Um, so, so Margaret wants to know, is there any plans to bring Rocky Horror back to the West End? Um, you know. I, I have, I don't know. Uh, but I know, I do know from what I can speak of is from past experience where Rocky Horror comes back every few years. And I do know the 50th anniversary is coming up in a couple of years. So who knows if they do a production in the meantime or, or whether they do a production for that. But I'd be very shocked if it wasn't a 50th anniversary production. Surely there's going to be. Well, we're, so, we're, we're going to touch on that a bit later on because there's a question about that uh, a wee bit later on about the 50th. Uh, so somebody actually asked about that. So we'll, we'll, but we'll, I, you know, I, but I think, you know, I don't know of any current plans, but um, as an actor, uh, I only hear about it when the auditions come up anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But after all this thing, you must have some insight knowledge. Well, sure. especially, not at, especially not at the moment. No, well, nobody's got anything. You know, when every show in the world is, is, is closed down, I'm like, hmm, who knows when anything's starting up? No, yeah, don't. that's true. That's very true at the moment, yes. Uh, so Sophie would like to know, what's your favourite theatre you've performed in? Now, you've travelled all around the world with, with Rocky Horror and other shows. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? Uh, anyone who knows me and follows me on my social media knows that I'm obsessed with theatres. Uh, I spent... Uh, a, a lot of time last year doing a project where I photographed, uh, did a photo shoot, because I'm a photographer on the side, I uh, did a photo shoot of every theater um, that I went to last year. Um, so, you know, I photographed about 50 theaters, I think last year. And uh, yeah, so there's some amazing ones in there and it's very hard for me to pick them. But, so I'm gonna be a little bit general here. I am obsessed with any Frank Matcham theater yeah. Frank Hatcham is a theatre architect uh, that um, he used to have lots of theatres around the UK, but uh, a lot of them have, um, have been pulled down, sadly. And, um, but there are still a certain amount left. I'm not sure off the top of my head, maybe about 20. Mm. Uh, and um, any theatre that he does is glorious. He's really amazing at creating an atmosphere and I love theatres that have an atmosphere before the show even starts. So you go in them and you go, oh my gosh, this is so grand and so beautiful. And you know, you can feel the excitement of actually being in a theatre. So any Frank Matcham, I also think the Leeds Grand is beautiful. It's absolutely adorable. Uh, if you can ever get to uh, Leeds and go to a theatre there, it is mind blowing. And uh, other than that, there's one more I want to mention, and that is the Civic Theatre in Auckland, in New Zealand. It is glorious. And I'll tell you why it's glorious. They built it like some 1920s Indian palace. And when you're inside in the audience, you look up and uh, the ceiling is got, it looks like you're outside. And um, it slowly as you're watching it, a star will appear and then another star will appear. And then you'll see a shooting star go across the ceiling. And then they have wow. these clouds, they have these projections of clouds wafting across the, the ceiling. It feels like you're outside. It is, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. So, and that's, that's here. That's where I am. So very lucky to have worked in that before. I can imagine that. that's a, it sounds like a great theater. Yeah. Um, so quite a few there. Uh, Matcham definitely. Matcham theatres. Uh, I know that he had a hand in the Palladium, I think, as well. London Palladium and things. So uh, and there are quite a few still out there. I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm right in saying the King's Theatre was one of them in Glasgow. Could be wrong. Yeah. He certainly got one of them in Glasgow and he had a hand in. Um, yeah. I think it might right. be the King. Yeah, quite a few. Um, that you've, that you've, so you've obviously been in a lot of, of Matchams and they are lovely theatres, definitely. Uh, I'll second that one. Um, so Jane, moving on, Jane wants to know, or she she gives, she say, she starts by saying she, when she auditions for shows, she sings I Feel Pretty from West Side Story. Yes. Is there, she wants to know, is there a go-to song for you to audition? And is there any songs that people should stay away from when auditioning? Well, I think... Do you know what? I don't have a go-to song. And because I've been so connected with Rocky Horror for such a long time, 
you know, I should probably start redoing my audition songs because I think my audition songs are probably a little bit dated. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm always on the lookout for um, new character songs. I love singing a character song. I love acting songs. Uh, that's where I think um, I'm at my strengths. Uh, so, you know, if anyone ever has finds a really amazing character song and they go, oh, Christian would see that, drop me a line, please. <laughs> Um, but you know, I, I think the ones you, uh, uh, avoid when you go to audition are the ones that everybody sings. You want to find something that's a little bit unique, a little bit different. And, um, and also within your capabilities, don't sing something where you go, Oh, I can almost get that note. I hope I get it on the day. Avoid it. Just sing to your strengths, sing something that is going to show you off whether it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, the most outrageously big, huge song, as long as it shows you to your, in your best, you know, in your best, mm -hmm. I think do that. So, you know, a lot of people go, oh, this is a song that's popular at the moment from my favorite musical that's on the West End right now. But, you know, you, do, you don't want to go in there. And one, you don't want to be compared to everybody else that's coming in. You want to do something that they might not have heard. And I think the people who are on the panel, they love hearing something that is a bit different. But they want to, if, they, if they're sitting listening to 15 Defying Gravities, for example, I know, yeah. know it's like enough songs, it's a great song, but if they hear 15 Defying Gravities, but then hear one popular, for example, I'm just thinking songs off their head, then that's yeah. a completely different song. So you're going to stand out, obviously. Yeah, totally. That's, that's, that's the way it works. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's... But I, I, think, I think of myself... Uh, as an actor who happens to be able to sing. I think that's possibly because of that background I had doing plays yeah. where I didn't think of myself as a musical theatre performer for a long time. And it's kind of swapped around now where I haven't done a play in years. <laughs> and at one stage, when I was in plays, I was like, oh my gosh, it'd be great if I, won, if I did a mu big musical one day. And now it's suddenly uh, swapped around without me even realising. And you now you're uh, sitting there going, I wish I could do a play again. <laughs> Not wish, but oh, it'd be amazing to do a play again. I would absolutely adore that. And I think, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully there's a bit of variety in my future. I'd love to think, uh, you know, you do a bit of everything. Yeah, that's sweet to look at it. And that's, Means you always have a job as well. <laughs> or you should theoretically always have a job. Um, <laughs> so Susan, just going back to, to this, um, she wants to know, what's the most challenging thing about playing Riff Raff? Uh, the most challenging thing for me, some people would assume that it was spending uh, hours every night hunched over. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, although I do wear padding in the show on my shoulder, um, I do spend hours every night standing like that. And I went and got, uh, I think they called it a DEXA scan where they, they, you lie down and they scan your whole body and they get your body composition and your bone density and stuff like that. And the guy went, oh, I see you've injured yourself on one side. And I was like, I've never injured myself on one side. Never done that. And I was like, but I do spend every single night pretending to be injured and I think and which means I'm slowly turning into riffraff <laughs> which is quite amazing so you know I so I feel quite comfortable I feel quite comfortable like you know standing like that and it's because my body is slowly turning into riffraff um probably the most challenging thing for me as riffraff is um uh, I am a bit of a, of a perfectionist and singing those notes uh, which are very high, belting out, you know, high Bs and Cs and stuff like that every night when you're doing eight shows a week on the road and you might be in, you know, 52 different place uh, cities throughout that year. Uh, it's, it's challenging to uh, stay at your best the whole time. So, you know, I, I am the one who's backstage who's, you know, steaming my voice, uh, you know, uh, doing, drinking huge amounts of water, not going out, uh, not making sure I'm not going to a loud place. You know, I am the person who ticks all those boxes because I really want to be at my best. And um, sometimes I, 
I wish I had a, uh, a role which maybe didn't sing so high. <laughs> but um, so I, the singing bit is the most challenging bit for me. Yeah, because it really is, it's a full on, Rocky is a rock concert. It's really a rock concert. And, okay. um, you know, you're fulfilling your rock and roll dreams up there. And I, yeah, but, you know, these days, if you were singing a, a rock concert, you'd have, you'd have uh, inner ears and so you could hear yourself properly and stuff like that. But it, do, it's not, it doesn't work like that with Rocky. And, you know, we don't necessarily have a lot of fold back on stage. We don't hear a lot on there. We hear something. What we hear on stage is very, very different from what you guys hear in the audience. So, um, yeah, it, it's challenging. But uh, obviously, I'm, I've sung 1,800 shows, so I, I have managed it. Yeah, yeah. If, if you've done it, <laughs> I still have. A, I still have a voice. Still have a voice. You can still talk and and, and still sing spectacularly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, so Chris wants to know what, apart from the the the, the common answer, uh, and you understand what the common answer is when I ask the question. What is your favourite song in Rocky Horror? So apart from uh, Time Warp, I think he means by that. Yeah. Common answer is the Time Warp. Um, I think my favorite show in the song is probably I'm Going Home because, um, you know, it is a really heartfelt song. And I think it comes at a point in the show where people aren't expecting to, um, it to tug the heartstrings. And I, yeah, I just think it can be a really beautiful song when it's done well. And, uh, and ironically, I, I don't sing in that song at all, but I do stand there and listen to it every night because uh, Riff Raff is, is, uh, is one of two characters on that stage that are just just watching and not singing. So I feel um, uh, I feel I can say that that song is actually one of the prettiest. Yeah, it's great. I yeah, I think it is. I think it does tug in the heartstrings a bit, uh, which yeah. again, you're not expecting when you go and see Rocky Horror, you're not expecting to be. I mean, there's some of, there's some very clever songs in there as well, like science fiction, uh, the opening number and closing number is it's incredibly very well, it's so well written. It's got so many references in there that are, you know, they just flow through that song. And I, um, yeah, I think it's a very clever song. But that song, I think it shows Richard's thinking behind the show. Because it brings in a lot of the, the the references, you go oh, so so that, and then you think well, if you've seen that or you you know about that, then you, this makes sense and that yeah, scene. It's, makes it sense. sets it up so well. It really yeah. sets the show up. Yeah, it's great. And it's the most, yeah. one of the most iconic openings to a film. Like obviously the stage show, you can't exactly do the same as the film, but obviously with yeah. the lips in the film, obviously it starts with the yeah. lips. Um, I believe there was I believe there was a version once in the UK where. Um, I think it might have been a one-off. I'm not sure because I was I wasn't there. Uh, where Richard O'Brien came in and did the opening and closing of the show, dressed as the usherette. And I would have paid anything to see him do that. That would have been amazing because <laughs> obviously Richard is the person who sings who sings it in the movie. Yeah, it's not his lips; it's Patricia Quinn's lips. But you know, he sings that and mimes to her lips, or the other way around. And um, yeah, so it would have been great to see him um, actually sing it live, you know, in the show, in the context of the show, as the usherette. It would be great. Yeah, that would have been, that would have been interesting. Uh, I think I have heard of that, actually. So I think that was a thing, yeah. Uh, I, I, I wasn't there but either, but no, I have heard of, of him dressed as the usherette, yeah. so that might be true. Uh, so Rob touches, I think we, we touched on this slightly at the start, but he, he asked a separate question. So you've played more than one character in, in Rocky Horror. You touched, yes. obviously, you, you've obviously played Riff Raff, we've, we've talked about that. You obviously, you also played Frankenfurter for a bit, and you also played Brad Majors. Yes. Um, so, so he wants to know, what's the easiest and the hardest one to play? Well, actually, um, last year as well, I got the opportunity to also play the narrator. Oh, did and, you? Um, that was a really... I really had in the back of my mind, I really wanted to play the narrator, because I actually think the narrator is the most fun part in the show. Yeah. And it's fun because you have freedom there. You have a freedom to actually interact with the audience. And, you know, it can be developed into something which is 
really fun and amazing and you can change it up a little bit and uh, you don't necessarily have the same confines as everybody else does and um yeah and so i actually found the narrator was the possibly the the easiest and the most fulfilling and i say i say easy with uh slight trepidation because it's not it, it's not it's not easy. <laughs> I know, it's but not it's easy, easy to afford them. And especially when you see people like Philip Franks, who has been a narrator uh, a lot over recent years, and he is just narrator God. <laughs> he's just, I, I watch, he's is, he is one person who um, I can watch in the wings, from the wings every night and just get astounded by how clever he is with the audience. He's a, he's a real hero of mine. I think he's amazing. And he's possibly the, one of the main reasons I would love to play the narrator one day. I'd love to get a good shot at, because, you know, I just went in and did, a, I think I did a week last year. But, uh, you know, I didn't have a, a full rehearsal period. I'd love to get a full rehearsal period of doing that role one day. It'd be amazing just to develop it properly. Um, so, I yeah, I think that was the easiest I think when you say easiest because you don't have to dance. You don't have to <laughs> you don't have to dance. You don't have to sing. You don't have to wear lots of makeup. Uh so it was uh yeah. But you know, Frank and Furter is possibly one of the most challenging because mainly because he has a he has the show resting on his shoulders. Yeah. And uh I don't think you can go out there and just throw caution to the wind with that role. You've really got to you've you've really got to pull out pull out all the stops because you've got so much to live up to with that role because it is one of the possibly one of the most sought after lead roles in musical theater i think over the years you know if if you get cast in that role in the uk especially then you know um especially with the fans you really have to um you've, you've got a, some big shoes some big high heels to to step into and uh you know it's just, it's funny with roles like um frankenfurter and, and riff raff um especially then you know you've got people who epitomize those roles in the movie like you know there's tim curry and there's richard o'brien and in many ways whenever anyone thinks of those roles rightly so they will always think of those original actors because they were perfection in those roles. So, um, you know, out of respect for the show, I think you've got to, you've got to be good in those roles. And I, so I think they're, they're the hardest. Yeah, no, I can understand that. I can understand that. Obviously, you are saying about Frank and Futter being a sort of after role. Look at who's played. Obviously, you, you've, you've had a shot of Riff Raff, eh, Riff Raff, sorry, hey, of Frank and Futter, and you're now the, the, the Rocky Horror legend. Um, I'm trying to think who else has played Frank and Furter. Well, for example, the, the tour I saw, it was uh, Liam Tamney that played yes. Frank and Furter, and he's now yes. in the West End. He's in the, he's a leading man in the West End now. He's yes. just opened the Prince of Egypt. So you, you, you're you made for life, I think, certainly for, for if you play Rocky Horror, or if you play Frankie, sorry. Uh, but one of the best roles, I think, for me, and, and that's just as an audience member, is Rocky. But that's just as a, as a gay man, I like right. a bit of, you know, rocket. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's more from personal you know what, experience. You know what the who has the hardest job in the show? And that's the Phantoms. The Phantoms, those guys, because you know, I see them backstage, they are in those costumes, they've got to do all the most full on dancing of anyone. They've got to like drop everything and just do somebody else's role because they understudy everybody else's roles in the show. Mm. At, at a moment's notice, they've got to know often they'll have to know their own role they'll have to know about sometimes about four or five other roles in the show that they've got to have in their head at any one time so um yeah i'm not capable of doing that i'm not <laughs> capable of being a phantom oh, they, 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 uh, phantoms and swings yeah. definitely have i'm not i'm not good enough to be a phantom i'm good enough to play riffraff i'm not good enough to be a phantom those guys are insane they're absolutely amazing no definitely yeah uh, i couldn't agree more with that definitely so Tom, we've touched on this again a wee bit, but he can ask some more questions about it. So it's 50 years from the first performance of the stage show in 2023. And then 2025 is 50 years since the film. So it obviously originated in London two years before the film was made. 
so the two questions he asks. First one is, do you think you'll still be playing Riff Raff at that point? Um, I would love to think that I would be. Uh, as an actor, I have no idea of what the future holds, uh -huh. but um, our Rocky Horror has continued to come um, in and out of my life for my entire um, acting career. Uh, I was in Rocky Horror maybe one or two years out of um, acting school, and then it just kept on coming back, coming back, coming back. So I would love to think that it will keep on coming back for my whole life. So, um, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> the second thing is, I think you've kind of answered it, but we'll ask it for Tom's point of view, just so that we can make sure. Uh, will they do it? Do you think they'll do anything special for it? Or do you think they'll wait for 2025? Surely they'll have to do something special for it. I don't know. I mean, like my, uh, often people ask me as if I'm going to know the answers, but um, I'm a fan of the show as well. So I... I don't necessarily have the inside information and um, but people ask me all the time, but often my, my response is your guess is as good as mine. So, you know, I'm happy to, to have a bit of a gossip and go, Ooh, maybe they'll do this or maybe they'll do that. But I have no idea. So, um, but I, it's the 50th. I'd be like, surely something's going to happen on the happen on the fiftieth. <laughs> you would think so. So, would you think they'll do it from the for the London performance? What what was the fortieth? When was that? Was that for the the film release, or was that from the first performance? Do you know when the uh, uh, the fortieth was for the show? Because the uh, the stage the stage show is a different. Um, like I said, it's different companies. Yeah. It's different. Um, I think you know, the sh the film is Fox, and now Disney's owned by Fox. Um, so that's the film, and obviously um, the stage show is owned by um, Hyde Panter and Richard O'Brien and the and the Rocky Horror Company. So um, they're you know they're different camps. So um, I, I don't think they will ever cross those over. So they will have their own individual celebrations, which means you know the people who are fans of the film and the stage show will get to celebrate twice. Twice. So the twenty twenty three they'll celebrate then for the fiftieth because that was. It helped Definitely. 50 years since it first performed in London. Um, and I'm sure Richard O'Brien wouldn't have thought back then, I can't speak for him, but I, I don't think he would have thought back then that 50 years later they would still be celebrating it. Surely <laughs> still, not. I mean, I mean, when you see him in the show and he's still he's standing there backstage, you know, dancing around to the music before he goes on, and, and you go, did you have any idea? any idea all that time ago when the show was only meant to be going for three weeks so you know but and that it would still be happening but decades decades yeah. after with you know full houses and crazy audiences and it's it's quite amazing it's beyond absolutely beyond yeah so yeah i would love to ask richard this is just that one question i'd I love to talk to him but i'd love that one question is would, would you Back then, did you ever think? Uh, I'd love to know the answer from from him. Yeah. Um, well, if I if I see him in the near future, I will ask him that question. I'm yeah. actually I'm actually in New Zealand, and he's in New Zealand, so he lives here as well. So, um, but we are in different islands. So, yeah. So I, not a social distance meet then. <laughs> no, no, unfortunately. That's not. a shame. <laughs> uh, Maybe one day. Uh, so Lynn wants to know, uh, or she, she, well, she wants to know as well, Riff Raff isn't the only iconic role you've played. You've, you've mentioned another one briefly. Um, you obviously did him high. Uh, just thought I'd bring that back up. Uh, you've played Jesus and, and Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, and she wants to know, she saw it back in, in the Q Theatre uh, back in 2014. Oh. Uh, so yeah. she remembers you from back then. Uh, so I think I could be Q, Q Theatres in Auckland, isn't it? Or, yeah. 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 So she saw you back then. So I, I think I said it's at Australia, but I think I, I meant New Zealand. Uh, apologies for that one. Um, what was it like being whipped and were they real? Actually, you know, uh, they had this, in the production we had, uh, the army that was whipping Jesus were this um, army of, um, of, of women who had these, they looked amazing. They built them so they were made of foam, but they looked like these long flailing whips 
and like you know the kind of whip that has you know about 40 tentacles hanging off it and um you know they're all knotted and and when you pick them up in reality they were so light they looked really heavy and hardcore and you pick them up and they were the lightest things in the world so when we went through rehearsals we went through the whipping and it, it didn't hurt at all it was I was like, no, this is absolutely fine. Yes, no, you you can whip me. It's absolutely fine. And you know, they, you know, they whip Jesus forty times or whatever it is. So you know, it's it's a lot. And uh, then when we got to the production of it, those whips were then covered with blood, which made them really heavy, and the blood was sticky. And I would often, often. Uh, come off after the show and I have to sort of, you know, shower all the blood off. And my back would actually have welts, whip welts across my back. And I mean, they were hardcore, but there was no way around it by that point. <laughs> there was no way around it. So I just had to put up with it and just beg them, beg them, please don't do it hard, please. But uh, yeah, every once in a while, it didn't happen every time, but every once in a while I would get a proper proper raised welt across my back yeah you didn't have to act no i didn't have to act <laughs> at all, in your no. face was real <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good thing yeah. um so obviously we i didn't get to see that performance because that's the way the other side of the world um but i'm sure you would have been great in jesus um maybe get you into do the tour one day one year in uk yeah. Yeah, I, um, I love growing a beard i am such a non-beard person that it was brilliant having a big beard i absolutely adored it <laughs> Why are you having a beard? The minute I get a wee bit, I'm shaving it off. I hate it. Uh, I looked, so I like, a, I I looked like a different. I looked like a completely different person. And anyone who sort of knows my um, acting and what I'm into with acting, I love transforming into a completely different character. That's that's part of the joy I get out of being an actor. And uh, talking so, about transforming, yes. you certainly don't look oh. like yourself there. <laughs> no, I don't. No, like that's before that's... and after. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, part of it is, yeah, I really like looking in the mirror and seeing, not myself, seeing somebody completely different. And, um, and you know, makeup and wigs and all the, you know, the costumes, they really enable you to do that. And because I class myself as a character actor, I'm often playing roles where I do get the opportunity to look completely different to myself. So um, I really love it, really love it. I, I, it excites me and it interests me and um, it keeps me um, stimulated, yeah. yeah. So just a couple more, a couple more fan questions. Uh, Julie wants to know, uh, what are the steps in time warp? <laughs> the steps? Hi, the... Oh, well, it's what, you mean like a jump to the left and yeah. maybe a step to the right? Hands on your hips, knees and tight, those ones? Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I asked Richard O'Brien once who did who choreographed the first time warp, and he didn't know. And but I, I was, uh, but I was like, who did it? He's like, well, nobody did it because all the, all the words are written in there, you know, jump to the left, step to the right, hands on your hips. There's not much that can go wrong with it, really. So um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she knew she knows them. She just wanted you to hear hear you say them. Oh, she oh. Just wanted you to hear you say them. Yeah. That was uh, all. I, did I did I say them? Uh, you said some of them. Yeah, you said some of them. Well, we'll, we'll give you yeah. that. She should be fine with that. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, if she wants to hear me say them properly, she can probably just type it into YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll hear them. <laughs> you'll hear you as yeah. refresh. Yeah. Um, okay. probably. I get all shy when I have to do stuff. Like a few people have said, uh, I've done a few interviews like this while lockdowns happened and people are like, can you lead us in the time warp? And I'm going, no, I can't do that. No, no, because I'm, I'm Christian at the moment. I'm not right I'm, I'm Christian at the moment. I, I get, yeah, it's very shy, especially in this. I mean, I'm luckily staying with my parents in New Zealand. So, you know, I'm, I'm in their little tiny office and, uh, so yeah, so while they're well, the different to, so. to the Leeds Theatre, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's completely different. No, no, no disrespect to your mum's office. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Not, not no. the same as 
Uh, anyone no, it's, not, it's, not, it's not quite the same. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to destroy the illusion of theatre. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I, I need if a, any musical does just kind of break the third wall, then it's definitely rock and horror. Like, oh, totally, yeah. Totally, completely yeah. breaks the third wall. Uh, so, so Donna asks, um, she, so we've had the most challenging thing about Riff Raff, but Donna wants to know, after playing so long of playing Riff Raff, what is the best thing about playing Riff Raff? Um, really, it's the support I get from the Rocky Horror fans. I, they have been so uh, amazing to me that I kind of think of them, you know, when you're, when you're in a show as an actor, you class the people you're in the show with often as a family, you know, people, you'll often hear actors refer to uh, cast members as their, you know, their theater family or, but I feel like with Rocky Horror, we have a huge theater family that um, goes bigger than just the cast. It goes back to the audience and the um you know when i've been doing the show such a long time and you know i've done multiple tours of the uk of it when i go to the stage door then it's like meeting up with old friends all the time which i think is amazing and um at the beginning of a run when say i'm in the you know the show just opens for the first time and then you know uh we'll go at stage door at that point, at the beginning of the run, I often know the people at stage door better than I know the cast members. <laughs> I might have known them for like 10 years or something like that, or 12 years. And whereas I've known the cast members for like, you know, four weeks. <laughs> yeah. So I usually end up at that point trying to introduce them all, <laughs> introduce them all. And I think it's quite an unusual thing for a lot of actors to uh, come out of stage door and then realize that, or is that you're introducing me to these people? Aren't, I'm probably never going to see them again. I was like, yes, you will see them again. You'll see them well, next you week. And you'll see them in a couple of weeks' time or a, few, or a month's time, you know, because Rocky Horror is like that. There's so, not many um, musicals out there that have such a cult following. No, there's not. Like, there's really like every musical has fans, but there's not many that have the cult following that would literally tour the UK with it. And the longevity of fans. The, yeah. the people who have been following the show off some of them since the beginning some of them you know for the last 48 years or whatever it is but you know some of them from the 80s and the 90s that's still decades so um you know they've invested their time their money and their love into the show and um i really respect that so you know they they make it they make rocky horror awesome for me stephanie wants to know will you be resuming the role at any point um again um i don't have any control over that so um i would love to think that i will play the role again that's a good answer uh, marcus he asks what would your dream role be other than refraff um i've said this a lot in interviews because it's a question that comes up a lot but i do it does change often and it also changes uh, often I'll go off uh, like an uh, interview and I go, oh, I should have said that. Oh, what about that? Oh, what about that? And at the moment, in recent years, I've been saying it's Hedvig in Hedvig and the Angry Inch. That would be a dream role for me because uh, I think the songs sit really well in my voice. And I think like Riff Raff, I have an understanding an instinct about the role of how it should be played and how I can play it. And I think I, I could fit into it really well. And um, the opportunity hasn't quite eventuated yet and maybe it never will. And that's fine. Uh, when I have roles that I think, oh, I might never play that, occasionally I'll record a song and I'll put it on my YouTube channel. You've done, you've done <laughs> one for, for Hedwig, haven't you? Both I one. have, yeah. And um, I also, at the moment in lockdown, I've been loving uh, Secret Garden, the old musical Secret Garden. And I would love to play Dickon. I'm probably slightly too old to play it now, but I would love to play that role. So Dickon is another one. And who knows, maybe I will record, maybe I should record that and get it out of my system as well. Yeah, get, it, get that one, yeah. <laughs> It's coming back to the West End. Uh, okay. It was supposed to have been on in April. It was only one 
uh, one performance. It was like a concert performance. Oh. Uh, but they've, they've obviously had to push that back due to, to lockdown. But it's still happening. Um, so should have got you to play Dickens for that. Oh, no, maybe, maybe, maybe there will be an opportunity somewhere along the way. Maybe it'll get um, more interest shown in the show again. And because uh, the music is magical, it, that's something. Yeah, magical, I, 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 I love. I love roles and I love music and I love shows that have a bit of magic about them. Um, so your garden definitely has magic. So our last fan question. I don't know if you'll be delighted to hear that or upset. I'm not quite sure. Uh, is uh, quite an interesting question actually I'd love, to, I'd love to know the answer to this one as well so Mary asks are you one of the ones that dance to the time warp at parties or do you shy away when it goes on because obviously time warp is a massive party classic especially in the UK uh, yes. I don't know what it's like in New Zealand um, so do you dance to it or do you shy away um, I shy away and um, I, I don't think it's anything to do with the time warp I think that's more to do with me <laughs> <laughs> And, um, yeah, but also, uh, I have noticed whenever I, you know, when you're in Rocky Horror and you're going from town to town and city to city and you'll go somewhere in the Rocky Horror and, you know, you go to a, a nightclub or something like that or a bar and, you know, the people who work there or so they might've seen the show or they might real, they might go, Oh, the Rocky Horror cast is in. The first thing they will do is put the time warp on. And um, what they don't realize is we've just finished work. <laughs> we've just finished, we've just finished, might have finished like eight shows of, you know, doing the time what we do, the time what three times a day during the show. And then you go, oh my God, I can't do it again. I can't do it again. And also because I get quite shy, as soon as that happens, as soon as the time what comes on, everybody who knows just turns to me and stares. <laughs> so I go, mm -hmm. Hi, hi. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, my phone's uh, I need to answer it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not very good in those situations, but that's because I'm, you know, I'm as myself then. I'm not Riff Raff. If Riff Raff was there, he'd be going for gold. Yes, that's, that's different. If you have a question, then yeah. that's fine. Uh, so that, that brings us to the end of the fan questions. Uh, just a, a not-so-quick fire round uh, oh, now. Yeah. Um, so a couple of questions that we ask everybody. Uh, one of them is usually your dream role, but you've answered that. So we'll, we'll move on. So what's your favourite musical theatre song? Now, it doesn't have to uh, be one you perform. I'm not looking. It can be anyone. Uh, Kiss Femini. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. I think that's a great... When that's done well, that is an insane song. So uh, I adore that, yeah. Interesting choice. Uh, what So... Dream role would be next, but you've answered that. So what's your, the next question would be, what's your dream gender bend role? Now, with that, we mean, obviously, there's a lot of gender bend when it comes to rock and horror, but we mean a role that's specifically for female, not a, not a cross-dresser or anything. Oh, oh, that's an interesting one. Oh, oh, I'm sure there's some great ones out there. Uh, I'm just going to say, I'm sure, that, I'm sure there's probably one that would be more suited to me, but I'm just going to go alphabet. I think I think slightly every kind of male performer wants to have a wee shot at Elf, I think secretly, yeah. even if they admit I mean, it. I, I just want to go up on that, you know, that. <laughs> so <laughs> just to go up to the end of the act one, <laughs> just flying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure that uh, I think I, I think everybody that's seen my kid kind of wants to do that flying, but I think even if you're a uh, performer or not, yeah. yeah, I know I would love to. I hate heights, but I still want to have a wee shot and just <laughs> flying. It doesn't have to be in the audience, like as a performer like just even after the show and um, last question uh what's your top five shows again top you don't have to have been in them oh okay i am going to say i think they've been quite topical tonight i'm going to say jesus christ superstar um secret garden um i think jesus christ superstar is just amazing music i think it's i think it's just glorious and wonderful um so that Hedwig and the Angry Inch uh Secret Garden they're all songs which I've been talking about I think that's why it's coming up in my head um I also like hmm oh Sweeney Todd Sweeney Todd I think is an awesome show um I love the music from that as well and let's think of another one. Um, 
Oh, I think Rocky Horror goes without saying. I thought that, I wasn't allowed to say Rocky. No, no, you can say it if that's part of your top five, then you can say it. And and uh, number one, counting down from five, four, three, two, one, Rocky Horror. Right, there you go. Yeah, that, that has to be. Has to be there, surely, after all these years. Yeah, it's it's the t- it's the <laughs> top. Yeah. Uh, so our last activity that we've got you to do. Have you heard of the ice bucket challenge? I have. Yes. You have. Right. We're not going to ask you to pour ice on yourself. So don't panic. Uh, Good, all we do. The what, sorry? Good, because it's winter here. <laughs> oh, it is, yeah, you're in winter, yeah. We, I would say we, well, nearly say we're in summer, but yeah, we're in the UK summer, uh, <laughs> which is almost like your winter, uh, I would say. Um, but so, obviously, the Ice Bucket Challenge, you did it, and then you had to nominate somebody to do it next. Uh, yes. So we've started the West End Talks nomination. Yes. Uh, and all we look to do is for you to nominate somebody to go through this pain because I'm sure okay. this, this torture, it can be anyone from theatre that you want, yep. but preferably somebody that you know so that you can kind of try and coax them in to come in to do a talk. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, let me think, I think somebody who would probably um, be very entertaining in a, a situation like this would be Richard Meek. <laughs> Good yeah. choice, yes. He obviously he yeah. played Brad and, and Matthew. He's, he's oh, right, yes, sh- yes. And, and he's done, you know, he's done lots around the place. Right. And um, you know, he's um, he's a funny guy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So all we ask you then to do is after we're finished, go onto Twitter and yeah. put up a wee tweet to say, "Just done my talk with Fest in Talks, Richard Meek. It's now your turn." And we'll right, try and fair. get him in to do a talk. That would be great. But that, unfortunately, that brings us to the end. It's been. Fantastic talking to you tonight, or this morning, nice whatever time you want to talk. All that's left for you guys at home to remember is obviously me and Christian aren't just here for fun. I'd like to hope you did have fun, but we're not just here for fun. Uh, we're here to try and raise money for acting for others. But if you can, anything at all you can, pop it into the link below, uh, the Just Given page, where it'll go straight to acting for others, and they'll be very much appreciated for that. So anything at all. I know times are hard for everybody, but if there's anything at all you can you can pop in, that would be great. And all that's left to say is next time, join us next time when we will have Adam Bailey, who's currently in Book of Mormon on the West End. Uh, so join us then. We'll, we'll discuss all that and the tours that he's been on. But all that's left to say is thank you very much, Christian. It's genuinely been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. Um, oh, thank you so much. Getting to know Christian a bit more than, than just Riff Raff uh, and getting to know you. So, But thank you very much for joining us. And guys, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. It's astounding. Time is fleeting.